Hello everybody, Mr. Mobs here and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm posting a follow-up video to a video that I posted a couple of weeks back, which was the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and seeing how the uh, 5090 performed in VR. Um, so that was a very popular video on the channel um, and there was quite a few questions, uh, a few uh, errors that you guys had noticed. So I just kind of wanted to do a follow-up video um, just to kind of cover those, those points off. Uh, before we get stuck in, I just want to say Big thank you to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel got a goal of a thousand subscribers um, and we're on about 800 and something now about 880 I believe um, so massive thank you to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel and if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet then please do um, I do hope to have a lot more VR content um, in relation to the 5090 over the coming weeks uh, I'm hoping to do a cyberpunk video uh, UE VR some of the prey dog mods um, a few other little bits and pieces as well so so please do hit that subscribe button if you're interested to see those. Okay, let's get stuck in. Okay, so one of the things that you guys pointed out in my previous video was I was using an older DLSS model and there's a new one out, DLSS 4, um, which you can enable using the DLSS swapper. Um, so I went about um, changing that to the latest DLSS. Um, it was fairly straightforward, but I did have to do it more than once because in the meantime, uh, I rebuilt my PC, put a new... Um, some new storage in there um, and a new uh, version of Windows um, so in doing so I lost all my well everything basically all my settings for everything so I had to redo the lot which is actually why this video has taken a bit longer than I'd hoped uh, to get it out but anyway running now on DLSS 4 version 310.2.1 uh, preset K um, my experience with that is actually it appears that it's dropped a few frames um, in comparison to the older DLSS model um, doesn't look much different to me to be honest honestly um, I mean I don't know some of you veteran uh, simmers will probably be spitting at me for saying that but I don't don't notice a massive difference for swapping it over but perhaps because there was a bit of time in between me using the older model and the newer model not sure uh, but anyway this is running on DLSS 4 um, super re resolution quality i will switch to other resolutions as well um dynamic settings is off because uh as you quite quite rightly pointed out i'd left it on in my previous video it wasn't intentional um so on all these uh tests it will be switched off Okay, so this time around, uh, using everything the same except for I've changed the DLSS Super resolution to performance mode. Um, as you can see on screen, there's roughly about an uplift of uh, about 7 to 10 frames per second, um, roughly. Um, so there's a bit of an uplift there. Um, a few of you said on my previous video um, that I should try quality mode. I did actually do that on that video. Um, there was quality versus performance. I, I guess you didn't watch all the way through. Um, but here we are again. So we've got performance mode um, versus quality mode. Like I say, everything else is set the same on this one. Um, I will put my PC specs on screen as well so you can see what I'm using. Uh, 5090 Founders Edition uh, CPU is the 9800X3D. Um, I'm using 64 gigabytes of RAM, uh, DDR5, uh, 6000 megahertz. Um, so that's, that's my PC spec. Um, this is being recorded in virtual desktop 
Um, I did try and use the the link cable because I can record full screen then, which is great. So I did a whole video where I'd recorded full screen um, just to realise it wasn't capturing the uh, frame counter. So that was quite frustrating. Spent quite a lot of time doing that video just to realise that it was no good and I had to start again. So that's why I'm using virtual desktop. But recording virtual desktop, I can't get it full screen. It records binocular view, which is why you've only got half a screen of the picture and then some text and my lovely face on the other half um, so yeah virtual desktop I haven't got synchronized space warp on um, or anything like that I'm just trying to show you the kind of bare bones um, if you change the settings I've not overclocked my GPU CPU anything like that it's all kind of standard um, so I just kind of wanted to point that out because it's probably relevant for you guys um, watching this Okay, and then finally we've got uh, DLSS turned off with anti-aliasing TAA. Um, so one thing I, I will say about the uh, difference between the DLSS4 and TAA is uh, there wasn't actually a, a lot of visual difference for me. Um, which I guess is credit to DLSS4. Um, when you're looking at the cockpit and the dials and stuff like that, they're all very sharp um, in DLSS4 as they are with TAA. Um, you'll see the kind of frame rate is, is kind of upper 50s most of the time, depending on where you're flying. I'll try and take the same flight path in each of the videos I've done here to give you a, a fairly accurate um comparison um, you can see it's actually dropping down a bit lower to the high 30s so TAA is definitely probably out of all of them you get the least um, benefits with the frame rate as you'd probably expect um, still very playable though um, and if I'm honest again you kind of hardened flight sim guys will will hate me for saying this but um, for me personally there's not a massive difference between any of the settings. I, I quite happily play on any of the settings that I've kind of covered today. Um, I know I could definitely tweak the sim. I could do a lot more to it um, to get it running a lot better, higher resolution, uh, using the link cable, as I said before. Um, although I will say with uh, my experience with the link cable, um, I was getting stutters that I, I thought was due to um, implementing the DLSS4 and it wasn't until I moved to virtual desktop and I didn't get those stutters that I realised uh, the only difference was using the link. Um, I was also using Oculus Mirror to um, record so I had that running as well as OBS so perhaps there was something there that was causing an issue but I was definitely getting stutters using the link which I wasn't getting using um, or I'm not getting using virtual desktop um, so that's probably worth noting as well. Um, um, I probably will do some further tests as well so if you guys have any suggestions on what you'd like to see um, either on Microsoft Flight Sim or any other game happy to kind of do my best there uh, these videos do take quite a long time even though I, you guess you can see they're very kind of amateur for me but um, it's just me doing it I'm not like a, a massive YouTuber that's got a, a whole team um, to help me out so all the editing and everything's done by me in my spare time which I haven't got a lot of these days unfortunately so anyway I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope it has been some use to you um, thank you if you've managed to watch all the way through um, please do hit that subscribe button get us up to a thousand subscribers I hope you have a nice day goodbye